All right, today's the day. And if you remember in a previous episode, I talked about how I had to kind of take a step back and do a little bit of a redesign on the pickup points or the mounting points for the suspension. So today we've got some of those parts back from the water jet cutters and we're gonna go ahead and look at mounting the coilovers and the positions for the pivot points for the rockers that are gonna be pushing on those front shocks through a push rod system. And otherwise, things have been a little bit slow in the shop, at least for video stuff, because I have some things that I've been doing that I don't particularly need to show in video, but things like those front door sills, that stiffener on the door sill. We did the driver's side and did that in a video. Well, I did the passenger side, but instead of you just seeing the same thing over and over again in mirror image, I won't put you through that, but that is done. Same thing with the passenger door. All the first layers for the door skin are done for the passenger door. And some other things that are just, like I said, you don't need to see both sides being done. So those have been taking up some time. But anyway, enough of that. Let's go take a look at the work on that front suspension. First thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and take a grinder and put a nice radius edge on all these water jet cut parts. That sharp edge um, in the future could cause some problems when you're uh, turning a wrench and slip. Don't want to lose a finger or at least gouge yourself open so a little radius helps there also powder coating as well and the, these pieces are all made with tab and slots um, these asymmetrical parts just to make sure you don't put them in backwards tab is bigger on one side shorter on the other side and then here this is a a plate from the rear suspension where they will be symmetrical so they can go in either way and here it is all welded up. Sorry, you missed all the welding here. Ready to go into the frame. Now the system is made up of two different plates. If this was one plate, then it would lap over the steering column and the differential. And it'd be a little bit difficult to pull any one of those parts without uh, trying to snake them out to the side or anything. So just to make everything easier to dismantle in the future. So we'll get those pieces bolted together and you see also there's some bolts that run down in the differential just to help me line that thing up. And then now I'm just uh, shimming it, getting it nice and level. Once I get a shim to level, I'm gonna go ahead and start checking for square, making sure everything is sitting exactly where it needs to be. Make sure those bolts aren't binding up. It keeps, makes, helps me know that I've got it all lined up that way. And then of course, uh, get out a measuring stick and actually check it for dimensions. And it looks like everything is nice and centered. Once we know it's centered, go ahead and tack weld it up. Need some good, nice, strong tack welds here because this is all gonna sit unwelded for quite a while until I get all the components all mounted onto this subframe. But this thing's gonna have some force working on it. So like I said, good strong welds. Now, typically I uh, have my water jet holes cut a thousandth over, but it seems like when they came back, the bolts did not quite fit so good, but that's okay. It's nice to have them nice and snug. So just take uh, some sanding cones and grind them out get them to fit nice in there. I see we also have a good tight fit on the coilover shocks. We'll get that bolt through there. Let's see this guy struggle for a while, huh? And if you struggle for too long, the answer is always get a bigger hammer. Pretty small hammer, but it works. So now that our shock is sitting in place, I'm going to take the rocker, which is going to translate our push rod action. And the pickup points for those rocker is going to slide it in there slide the bolt through to catch those two pieces. Now this is made up of kind of a 
two concentric or off-centric pieces of plate but by putting them nice and flush against the rocker itself and as it sits down against the subframe holds it nice and square in position make sure i have good alignment between that rocker and the pickup point for the shock itself and once they're there of course matter of tack welding it in position same thing again really good strong tack welds because i'm going to be bumping up against that thing quite a bit as I add pickup points for this, the A arms. Now we're going to switch over and do the other side. Same thing, enlarge that hole a little bit so I get a nice, good fit on that bolt. Swing that shock around. And it looks like I have a little uh, easier time this time. Same thing, get a bolt, two pieces for my rocker pickup point. Slide the bolt through each of them. And as long as those pickup point plates are tight against the rocker itself, as you drop it down onto the subframe, fits exactly where it wants to be. The only thing is we'll just go ahead and check the measurement here just to make sure that it is sitting the same place as the opposite side. About an eighth of an inch off, scoot it forward. Looks good now. We're going to go back and tack weld that thing in place. Now the only thing left after I get these tack welds done is there are a couple of braces that are going to go under that main plate for the pickup points. These brackets will strengthen this thing against the force of the shock and for the torque of the differential. All right, so there you have the front coilovers. They are tack welded in place. Um, I do need to, as you saw, that little bracket on the bottom has got to be welded in place as well, but we can't get to those things until we take that differential, the steering rack, and those things off. But before we take all that off, we are going to put the rest of the pickup points on and we'll bring that to you in another video. Once all those pieces are welded into place, or at least tack welded, like I said, we'll remove the differential, the steering rack, and that mounting plate for the diff, pull it all apart, put that frame onto the bench, and weld it all up. Of course, you don't want to sit and watch the tedium of hours of welding. I think you get the drift with those tack welds in place, what's going on from there. Anyway, that's our video for today. Hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you come back and see us again. Thanks for stopping by.